We're live. NFL Week 8 preview show, I guess. There's not a lot of games to talk about, Dylan. Not a lot going. There's a couple like we'll talk about the Falcons and the Bucks. That's a huge game for for division uh implications. But other than that, not really anything exciting. Uh I, there's a couple upsets I have my eye on, but I mean Bill Seahawks maybe. Uh Seattle uh, Cowboys might be back. 49ers. Cowboys 49ers big time matchup Sunday night football if, loser leaves town game. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, and it's like a big names, big brands, but Poopy football. Big boom. Poop, bad football. Big mm. boom. No. It might be more of a doom. It might be more of a doom. It might be more of a doom in poopy football, to be honest. But, yeah, NFL so, preview show today. Uh, before we get into things, Dylan, you had something you want to bring up? Yeah, I was, so you guys do great work, right? Uh, the Carter Cast Network covers a lot of things. It, we do football. like That's the main priority during football season. But then this is the time we start doing basketball. You, Carter, you and Ben do college basketball. Uh, Seth and I, or just I, have done baseball. Um, but we have some allegations we have to take care of. Uh oh. What did I say? You guys started talking in, at the beginning of the NBA show, and if you haven't watched the oh. NBA show, go watch the NBA show. You guys are basketball people at heart. You're talking about yeah, being basketball at heart during football season. I didn't say yeah. during football season. I said I am a basketball person at heart. No, but I'm saying you're talking about it during football season. Yeah. What's the problem with that? Those allegations are true, Dylan. Yeah, we I, need won't, you lo- I won't lie. We need you guys locked in. We need you locked, locked in. in. I'm locked in. I don't I'm know. I don't in. know if you are. I don't. I don't have Nick Celtics on my monitor right here. Your, I promise. Your brain might be on football, but it sounds look, like your heart's with basketball. Look, Dylan. If I've got Red Zone on the main screen and a couple other games on, if I want to put Pistons Wizards on my laptop on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon, I might do it. Sue me. I don't know. I, <laughs> that could. That's a <laughs> spare screen that could be used for watching game film. I'm just saying. Or watching the Carter cast. <laughs> or watching the Carter I've been doing it. I've been watching Carter cast in the metaverse. Mm. How is it? L- let me say, I need to lose some weight. <laughs> right there with you, buddy. <laughs> I need to lose some weight, yeah. Uh-oh. Also, I wanted to ask real quick. Uh, if, if you're here, um, raise your hand if you hit your NFL parlay pick last week. Connor, your hand should be raised. And just for reference, uh, if Ben was here, his hand would not be raised. So. Oh, yeah, I have one over. The London just, over. Yep, hand up. The over. And I just want to get that out of the way. A lot of people, uh, I'm talking to you, Gio. I know you're watching. A lot of people <laughs> in the comments saying Dylan doesn't know ball. Sweep of the parlay picks. Thank you. <laughs> he did sweep the parlay picks. Nice sweep. job, Dylan. Talking about weight loss, I go to L.A. tomorrow. <laughs> Should I just go get some of Zempic, Dylan? Everyone's doing it down there. Oh, okay, I, I was gonna say I don't think your location affects how your uh, your accessibility to it does it. I, I feel be. like it'd be way mm. more accessible in LA if everyone's doing it under the table. Drugs are a little more accessible over there. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, hmm. all right. Yeah, they're just hawking it on the streets. I don't. I mean, Talk you were t- you were telling uh, me the other mm, night on Fox News all these drugs going on in California. I don't know. That's what you're saying. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> me? Yeah. Me? F- you got the wrong Dylan. You're you're a Fox News correspondent. What do you mean? Did you see the barbershop clip today? Donald Trump did, at the barbershop? I did, I did see the, the elect, barbershop. The electricity bill's going up 600%, Carter. What are we going to do? 600%. Uh, <laughs> NFL. NFL preview show. That's do we what, have that's how the NFL? Do we, I don't can we know, just, man. We, can we, we just talk. keep yakking? We could keep yakking. Can we what go do mostly? <laughs> Yeah, want that. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so welcome uh, to the uh, NFL draft. We're going to do another draft for the summer. We, yeah. Well, <laughs> Super we Bowl might as, teams. We might yeah. as well be yakking right now, for being honest, because the A block today, the Rams are looking to trade people all of a sudden, Dylan. Yeah, Cooper Cup. I saw. Now, I saw this Matthew Stafford. The only place I saw report it was Dov. And we know we know the aggregation practices can mm-hmm. be a little sus, a little, a little sus from Dov. But I was seeing to the Vikings ahead of Thursday night football, no less, when they play each other. I doubt that happens. If he goes to the Vikings, it'll have to be after the game, right? After this week. So I would think Maybe it would he's have inactive to, this week. I don't know. I would think it would have to be after. But I want to talk about the implications of that trade. Uh, so we have on this show, I think we started the beginning of the year and we said, oh, Sam Darnold has weapons, good offensive line. This yep. is a, a change of pace, a nice change of scenery for Sam Darnold. You dig into some of the stats, 
It's not that great. They're winning games. That's fine. But think about of what kind of slap in the face this would be to Sam Darnold. If you take your team to five and one, a couple, uh, uh, you know, the Texans win is pretty good and they go out and get a new quarterback. Now, am I saying it's the wrong move? Absolutely not. Matthew Wait. Stafford makes this Vikings team a, a Super Bowl contender. I thought we said Cooper Cup. Is it Stafford too? It's Stafford, Stafford too. too. Yeah, it's Stafford too. Oh no. Okay, that's insane. It's, if you're the, the Vikings the, and you're five and one, there's no way in hell you go out and get Matthew Stafford. Yeah, the, for people not that aren't in, on Twitter and everything, the rumors were Cup to KC. That one seemed like it had a little more legs to it. Yeah. And then Stafford to the Vikings, that was more Twitter aggregation. But I still want to discuss it because I think it's an interesting topic. Because well, this is what different a slap than, in the face that is the Darnold and JJ McCarthy. Yeah. This is a different. This is different than Justin Fields getting benched after going four and two. Because if you just use the eye test, I mean, you might as well play Russ. He's got him for what half a million dollars. You basically have him for free. See what you got. That's fine. The Vikings are five and one with Sam Darnold. They just lost their first game. That I no way. But, but big oh, but here. Sam Darnold. We've talked about it on this show. I and, and I like Sam Darnold. I was high on him coming into the year. There's not a lot that you could point to as Sam Darnold and say he is going to keep winning games. There just isn't because we talked about how they get out to leads. It's Aaron Jones, Ty Chandler, run it down your throat, drain clock. Sam Darnold's had some good throws, but he still hasn't taken his team, risen him up from the ground and said, hey, you're down and out. Sam Darnold's going to lead you to the promised land. We haven't seen it yet. We know Stafford can do it. Let me ask a question then. If okay. the Vikings hypothetically traded for Sam Darnold or traded Sam Darnold away for Matthew Stafford, does that make them a Super Bowl contender? 100%. Would that make them a Super Bowl favorite? Where would you rank them? Power ranking? Yep. That would, I mean, I, 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 can, to go top I five. can see that, that I would feel better about the Vikings in a playoff scenario with Matthew Stafford under center. But if you're five and one, you can't go make a change like this. Like, there's no way this has ever happened, barring an injury. Justin yeah. Fields, we just talked about it. Justin Fields. Okay, but Steelers. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah, never mind. I, but if you want to fight against that, then you'd have to concede that Russie's better. But they didn't go out and trade oh. for Russell Wilson. Oh, Russie. That's true. Better. That's fair. That's fair. Dylan. Fair point. I'm getting a little sussy for Russie. Guys, a, if you want to apologize, I'll, I'll ask you every week from now on. If you want oh, to apologize I'll, I'll, to me. What am I apologizing for? MVP or r- su- being sussy for Russie? Well, I, I like being stubborn for the bit. But you can't do the MVP thing anymore. He missed he missed six weeks. Like okay, the MVP so, thing's not a thing anymore. But so, I will say, if he would have played for the whole season, MVP would be in the conversation. What about comeback player of the year? No, I, didn't they just come out and say that there's new criteria where it has to be someone that was like, well, oh well, I guess the calf. I guess the okay, I guess the calf. I don't see so that. maybe I doubt it, but maybe he's not even listed on FanDuel right now. Yeah. So no. Because he played, I mean, he played just about all of last year. Yeah, so, no, uh, he's not on fan duels or anything. So. I, want, I want to say this about, the, oh, go ahead. I just need it on record real quick because I will ask, any apologies? Dylan, you were right nope. about Russie yet? No? Uh, okay. I, you were right about being sussy for Russie. You were not correct about him being the best quarterback in the league type talks. You ready for this? Steelers are still missing the playoffs. Oh, they're Super no, they're Bowl not. contenders now. No, they're, they're not missing the playoffs. playoffs. No, no, they are no, no, no. Connor, that was the first game since 2022 the Steelers scored 35 points or more. You take that with this defense, what are you talking about? And this was a Jets. This is a Jets defense that's top ten in the league. Oh, Uh, they're top ten. They're top ten. They're overrated. They might be overrated, overrated, but they're still top ten. And they might be a complete disaster with their only wins being over the Titans. That kind of game was gift wrapped to them and the Patriots. Did we see that Rodgers is now blaming the media? for the downfall of the Jets. So it's press conference. That. It's our it's Carter Cast's fault that the Jets. <laughs> He's, he saw Ben's rain on Aaron Rodgers and he was like, that's the problem right that, there. That's that's, him. that's infesting our locker room. Yeah. Married guy. UBA. So you're saying the the Steelers aren't making the playoffs? Yeah. They're gonna okay, flame why? out. Why? Let's because they're, they're gonna flame out. They're not gonna flame out. That defense is too good to flame out. <laughs> okay. Connor Connor. Connor. Yes. Connor. 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 Five and two right now, okay? Let's read a schedule. You give me the losses. Okay? I'm ready. Giants. That's a win. At Commanders. That's after the bye. If Jaden Daniels is back, that's a loss. Okay, I'll give you that. Ravens. Loss. 
Home Ravens, not at Ravens. Just want to clarify that. Still lost. Loss. Loss. Okay. At Browns. Win. Okay, nice. So we're at seven wins. Bra- uh, at Bengals. Loss. Fair. I'll give you that. Uh, hosting Browns. Actually, this one's the win. They're going to beat them at home. So I think they split with the Browns. Hosting Browns. Okay, so still seven wins. At Eagles. Loss. Yeah. <laughs> they guard loss. this guy. Big this loss. guy, we're a bit show Big now. How are, we, how are we supposed to put this episode out? Let me finish out? this out for you. At Baltimore, loss. At KC, or versus KC, loss. Versus okay. Cincinnati again, loss. We're at seven wins, seven and ten. They'll take they'll take one against the... Well, we don't need to get into this. Eight and nine. You, okay, eight and nine. They still missed the playoffs. You, you are crazy. That's what I would say. You, crazy. I'll die they, on this hill. You know what? This has worked out so far. I died on the Saints being bad hill. That worked out, even though Carson uh, did. But that worked yeah, out. That, yeah, 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 and, 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 and it, wor- it worked out for the Bucks too, because now the Bucks are injured. I think you might just be the grim reaper of these teams. So <sighs> maybe, uh, maybe, you know, maybe this so podcast... Rusty ain't lasting too long. Sorry, guys. Oh, oh! So you're, you're calling an injury to Rusty? No, what we're saying. No, you're no. using your Connor Spare of Voodoo Magic right now that you use on the Bucks and the Saints right now. Oh, hmm. I can't hmm. help it. You know what? I'm trying to suspicious. set the Panthers up for success. I might be coming for Kirk Cousins next. Eventually, there's going to be no starting quarterbacks left from <laughs> this division. Nobody left. Oh what? shoot! So if Kirk you ever say hurt... anything mean about Andy Dalton? Mm. Just, mm. just anything. Survivor of a car crash, by the way. So Survivor nice. tread lightly. Yeah. Strong. Yeah, Andy Dalton strong. Andy Dalton I forever. Wanted... I want to make one comment on the Rams before we move on. At this point, if you're the Rams, trade everyone. Time to reset. What are you doing? If you have this old roster and you're in salary cap hell, you might as well just tear it all down and start over because you're not going to compete for a playoff spot this year. You're definitely not competing for a Super Bowl. Why wouldn't you just start it all over? Because what's the point at that point? Does McVay want to go through that rebuild, though? Because then if you do... He's going after this year. If you deplete it, then you lose McVay. Is that worth it? You might lose him anyways. Does he want to run it back with 38-year-old Stafford and Cooper Cup again, who's injured again, and Puka, who's injured again? If you're McVay, do you want to do that again for another year, even if they keep everyone around? They're not a contending roster if they re-signed everybody they have right now. That's fair. Connor, can I offer you a counterpoint to your Rams trade everybody claim? Sure. Outside of Stafford and Cup, who are you trading? Who's going to want anybody on that roster? The only other ones, what, Puka? Kyron Puka? Williams? That's about it. Eh, no, you're right. Yeah, okay. Usher in a new era, Dylan. Got to do something. I, I don't know if it's a uh, – I don't know. We'll see. There's just not a lot of guys to trade on that team. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other thing I wanted to bring up real quick, uh, kind of going back to the Bucks injury point or whatever, the Falcons are just going to win this division by process of elimination now that Mike Evans and Chris Godwin are out for multiple weeks, and now the Saints, they're toast now. The Panthers, they're not even in the same league. They're in the NFL G League right now. So I guess the Falcons have to be the division winner right now. This is kind of what we touched on in our preview. Like the Falcons, or at least what I thought, the Falcons would just win by default. They might be 9-8, and eight, but they're going to win the division. Panthers, cross them off. Saints without Derek Carr, cross them off. Bucks without Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. We've seen Baker without them. We saw it last night without Mike Evans for the whole game. Cross them off. And that's the other thing is I don't think any of these teams have a shot at the wild card now because the NFC no. North is so dominant and the NFC East has multiple teams now with the Eagles and Commanders in contention and the Cowboys are there too. There is no world where the NFC South gets two teams in now. Nope. Realistically, we are looking at the Falcons. If they go 7-10, and 8-9, and nine, they might win this division. This game coming up this week is very important, right? Because they're 3-0 in the division. They beat each team once, and they have each team on their schedule one more time. We have Chris Godwin, who I think I heard is out for the season. And then, yeah, that yeah. injury was bad. And then Did you, you see Mike- him? He uh, he said it. he was like my career is over after the well, he's on the cart. Oh yeah, but he seems <clears> so <throat> stoic about it. He seems so yeah, like just complacent, Brutal. which is you know I I guess I can respect that point of view. Nothing he can do about it at this point. Uh, this game is very important. Godwin, I think I saw or not Godwin. I'm sorry, Evans. I saw he was going to be out until after the bye week, so like week twelve or something. I can't remember. So he, he there's some hope for him to come back, but this game is huge at Tampa Bay. And this is an awful spot for the Buccaneers. You have Monday night football. You're coming. You're playing a divisional game. You do get to host it, but then you have Monday night football against the Kansas City Chiefs on deck. This is a sandwich spot if I've ever seen one, and yep. the Bucs have to win this game. They have to win this game if they want a chance to win the division. The, the, the spot is just so tough. I don't see a world where they do it as depleted as they are. 
It's a perfect no. storm. Injuries, scheduling, scheduling mishap right there, like you just said. And man, guys, last night, we don't have to go into it. There was some generational stat padding. If you just look at the box score, you're like, man, <laughs> Baker had 370 yards, three touchdowns, two picks. Like, that's an okay game. No. Nope. That's it. Nope. Stat padding. Baker on his Angel Reese grind. Mm, there uh-oh. you go. Basketball reference. Yeah, there you go. Reference. Yeah. I got you. Fox News over Dylan now. and basketball reference. Hey, Let's go. Let's go back. Fox News. I'm just talking ball. I'll talk talking ball with the talking boys. Ball. No, well, ask I think me. that's a fair Sue point. Me. Angel Reese does clearly stat pad. We're, we're, I'm not going to argue it. Baker, Baker given like bad Brett Favre vibes. Just kind of throwing the ball up there. Those interceptions. Those How picks much? were bad. Yeah. And he yeah, had all day on that one in the end zone. He had all day. Every fan is now going to see what Baker's like without Hall of Fame receivers. <laughs> That's well, going to be alarming. And, and Connor, I can guarantee you, no one's going to go back to that video and say you were right. No, but I'll no. I'll have it right here. Thank you. But is there an asterisk by it because of the injuries? Well, who's to say this? Eh. You know, they wouldn't have flamed out anyways. Uh, yeah, yeah sure. no, who leave knows? it up to chance. I'll, yeah, leave yeah. it up to chance. You know leave it. I'll Connor's not a rookie. This. I might not be completely right. Wasn't wrong. So we'll just call it a draw. Small yeah. victories. So, so uh, I understand we kind of hopped subjects here. I'm sorry to go back to the Cooper Cup thing. The but real quick before you go, the topic bar for this entire episode just be like I don't know whatever we felt like talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bouncing around. Hodgepodge. Cooper Cup. Who's the best suitor? Who's a team that's in contention that would be the best suitor for a wide receiver? I have PFF pulled up here, and I I sorted by receiving grades. I'm looking at records. Bears. Four and two, no. they have they no. have like a bottom ten receiving grade, which is hilarious because they were graded out as one of the top receiving class or receiving coming into in the, the league year. That was supposed year. to be their strength. Yeah, DJ yeah. Moore and you know Adunze, Adunze, Keenan Keenan. Allen. Yeah. yeah. Cowboys. Other than that, Cowboy uh, Broncos quietly at four and three have the fourth worst receiving grade. If you're Cooper Cup though, would... you don't want to catch passes from Bo Nix. <laughs> I think yeah, it, that's true. I think the two answers are K- Kansas City and. The Cowboys, especially Kansas City with these injuries. I mean, imagine yeah. what Mahomes would do with Cup right now. This dude's winning yep. games with Miko Hardman, Juju Smith-Schuster. Actually, we had, we got a Sky Moore appearance last game too. He caught a ball. Wow. Well, another answer would be the 49ers since I used towards ACL, but I don't know how that would that would happen. I don't know how that would happen. Steelers. Steelers need everything. Steelers. 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 <laughs> Steelers, Steelers. Yeah, I go catch some passes from Russie. I love it, but. Russie was cubby. making Van Jefferson look like a real wide receiver once again. And that's the power of bringing in. A, I tried to tell you guys this. That's the power of bringing in a veteran. A rising tide lifts all ships. When you come in and you play well, you're a veteran. You get the locker room ready. That's something Justin can't do it. Justin can't do it, but Russie can. He said, no distractions, no sandwiches, no Mr. Unlimited. I'm going 2015 Seattle Seahawks, Russie here. It's awesome to see. So it's, then where should Justin Fields go if Russell Wilson is the starter the rest of the season? Like, Justin Fields isn't a starting quarterback. But let's say mm. l- let's say they're like, you know what? We're we're going to Russy. Justin Fields is like, I'm going to it might be a locker room out. thing where he's like, I need to start somewhere. Where would be the best location for him cuz I had trouble with this one. I know that two is supposed to be back, but he would be a hell of a lot better than Tim Boyle or Tyler Huntley in Miami. But, are they too far behind to really two make a comeback? I mean, yeah. they're above two the Jets four. right now. They're a half game up on the Jets. I, I still feel like the AFC East has a good chance to get two teams in the playoffs. I don't know. Tua not wearing the Guardian cap? That's, yeah. wild. That's wild. That's a choice. I, I, said, I said my piece on X there. Um, him saying the car accident thing, that's what I tell you know my family or my in-laws when they ask me like oh why do you gamble your money on sports like oh we gamble every day but i've never said that about my life or traumatic head injury (laughs) i've never been oh well people drive every day is it that much heavier on your head or something that like it would be that frustrating or i don't know i've wondered the same thing because if if it really if there are the downsides are so limited why doesn't everybody wear it like why would you not take extra protection but maybe maybe i don't know yeah i don't know i probably don't know it's not yeah. drippy enough. Did you say drippy? Not drippy it's not enough? Drippy, not drippy enough. If Mahomes is going to wear a helmet that looks like it's just sitting on top of his head, then I think these guys can suck it up and wear a guardian cap. Look, if Lamar Jackson comes out and wears a guardian cap, half the league will wear him next week. So that's that's all it takes. <laughs> all right, Brandon. <laughs> no, I'm, that wasn't a shot. I'm saying that, that people would emulate him. You're right. I think you – I believe it, yeah. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> I guess. <laughs> I maybe I'll maybe I'll have to get the folks down at BYU to let me try on the Guardian cap. Mm. That would be we got to get that from the Carter Cast socials. A picture, that picture could be of the Carter new parlay, the parlay picture for you. I'll somehow get yes. this gray Nike hat on top of the Guardian hat too, just to make sure it's always on. <laughs> After having to listen to Dylan talk ball for an hour straight, you got to put yeah. the Guardian cap on. Uh, Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Dylan's terrible takes. <laughs> Bang my head against the wall listening to his takes. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, so right now, if you're listening to this, Ugh. we are hiring right now, so put your applications in the DMs <laughs> below um, to replace Dylan's spot. You have to go 5-0. and If you give me a 5-0 and parlay that we all hit, plus 10,000 odds or better, you get to be on the show. How about that? I'll watch from the metaverse. There you go. <laughs> we're about to lose Dylan to reality anyway, the- so we, we're going to need a replacement no matter what. The oh my bit, goodness! The bit was going to be anytime you guys talk about the Panthers, I just le- I go to the metaverse, but we haven't had Panthers talk yet. They're not. We're not talking about the Panthers. <laughs> no, we're not talking about the Panthers today, unless when we do our speed round of the NFL previews. Uh, so, two other things before we. Oh, you you had a question. I, light lightning round. I want one team from each of you guys. Cooper Cup, most most likely suitor. Kansas City Chiefs, no question. I'm going Pittsburgh Steelers. I think I'm going to be different to the Dallas Cowboys. Those are all, I think those are all very rational picks from us. Good work, boys. Yeah. Um, sneaky one. I don't know. I was going to come Ravens? up with something stupid. <laughs> D- Rashad Bateman, not bad. Resurgence. Yeah. Hey, Jerry's, out. Be bad. Jerry's out still. All right. A uh, couple other topics I want to hit on, and then we'll go uh, speed around through some NFL preview games. This is a shorter pod, uh, as you could definitely tell. MVP talks. As of right now, we are seven, eight weeks into the NFL season. Who is your NFL MVP right now, Connor? This is going to be unpopular, but he's the betting favorite for a reason, and it's Patrick Mahomes. It just is. The Chiefs are going to go 15-2 and two or 14-3, and three, and guess who's going to win it? Patrick Mahomes. He's like 5-1 to one right now. Bet him. If they're 15-2, and two, he's winning it. He could have 20 interceptions. It does not matter. I uh, I'm gonna have to fact check you there. Don't you know? Don't call me Snipes or Snopes or whatever it is. MSNBC. I'm seeing Lamar Jackson plus two twenty five. Patrick Mahomes plus four seventy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Second, you're right. You're right. But still, still, if you like him, that's discount. I don't think there's gonna be a better spot to bet him than this week. Why would if if they did the MVP awards right now, who should it be? You have to say Lamar Jackson after last night's performance. Like that is the answer through through these first few games. But I don't think that's going to be what it is at the end of the year, and that's why I'm saying Mahomes, and I'm not saying Jared Goff. I was going to say, why not Jared Goff then? That's a fair choice. I just don't think. I, I don't know. What do you think? I think I might go Jared Goff. He's been unbelievable this season so far. He has, and it's been a step up from what we've seen in years past, which which has to play into it. And I don't know if there's any voter fatigue with Mahomes because the league is in love with him, but. But that the issue is a little bit. But the issue with Jared Goff is everything around him is built so perfectly right now. The offensive line's elite. The wide receivers are balling. The w- running backs are awesome. With Lamar Jackson, he elevates this team so much. And if you put Lamar Jackson on this Lions team, we're talking about a seventeen and zero season. I think. Do you think? I, I think I agree with you. I don't want that to be misconstrued. You talk about the weapons that Jared Goff has and how that makes him look better. Do voters care? Are they going to add that context? No. I'm going to say I don't no. think they will. No, I don't think they will either because we looked at last year and you go, oh, two is an MVP candidate? But you put almost any other quarterback that in that same tier with like Dak and Mahomes and Josh Allen, you give them two as wide receiver core. Oh, my goodness. They're the clear favorite for MVP. I think it's two different questions. I think if you're asking me who's been the MVP through seven weeks, then it's not Mahomes. It is not Mahomes. It's probably Jared Goff or Lamar Jackson. Those would be my two. But if you're asking me who's going to win it at the end of the year and who I would bet on right now, it's Patrick Mahomes. Their schedule is a cakewalk coming up. A cakewalk. They've already gotten through the hard games. They beat Baltimore, beat Cincinnati, beat the Falcons, beat the 49ers, and now look who they're playing. Raiders, Bucks depleted. Broncos, Bills will be a good game. Panthers, Raiders, Chargers, Browns. Texans, Steelers, Broncos. That is 14 and 3 at worst. That's at worst. Could they go 17 and 0? That is a question I've been looking at all day. I think they still drop a stupid one. I think one of the Vegas games or something dumb they'll lose, but 15 and 2 is seriously on the table. Our boy Brian had a TikTok. 
uh, about Chiefs 20-0 today if you guys didn't see it. 20-0, run the table. Listen, as of right now, I think it's really hard to say that a pocket passer is going to win the MVP. I just think those days are behind us, and Jared Goff brings almost no rush threat. That works against him. But that 18-for-18 18 18 game, that's just right here. And it's going to be yeah. right here until the end of the year. The only, the only problem, and to speak what you – and speak to – oh, my gosh. And to speak to what you said, Connor, the Packers, the Bears, and the Vikings – I mean, they play in the toughest division. They have to play those teams six total times. It's going to be tough to put it together a comprehensive body of work. For that reason, I would probably go – Lamar Jackson. I don't think Josh Allen's going to the price on him is going to get any higher moving forward. So if you like Josh Allen, maybe take him now. Yeah. Right now it's Jared Goff, but I don't think he wins it just because it's it's never it can't be a pocket passer anymore. I don't think. I think this year it's just going to end up going to between Mahomes or Goff, which one has the better record by the end. And we were going into this season, and we're like, wow, the Lions have an easy back half of their schedule. And that's true. I think they do. But the NFC North has gotten so good that the Lions could end up at 13-4, and 12-5 and five with how good their competition is in their own division. Meanwhile, the Chiefs, you read off their schedule, Connor. There's no Cake way walk. they finish worse than 14 wins. But, no. but counterpoint, at, at some point, the stats have to matter. That's just the nature of the award. Whether yeah. we like it or not, if, if Patrick Mahomes keeps playing like he has been, and I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't want this misconstrued, but the stats aren't really there. He's turning the ball over more than he ever has. He's winning games, sure, but I do think at some point, if Mahomes keeps playing like he has been, now I'm not saying that will happen, but the, the stats have to be there. No, I think that's to be fair. a 17-0 or not. And I, Go ahead, I think, Connor. Yeah, I was just going to say, Dylan, that's true, but I, I would bet on Mahomes more so regressing back to what we've seen in years past. I mean, the last few years, he's had 13, 12, 14 interceptions the last three years. He's already at eight right now. If he strings together four or five games with maybe like one pick, those stats are going to start to look a lot more similar to what we've seen in years past, and then it's not going to matter. Nobody's going to say, remember when you started the season 7-0 and but had eight picks? If he finishes with 15 picks, that's right on pace where we've seen the last few years. And like I said, record matters. And I think there's more of a chance that Mahomes plays better and gets back to normal like what we were used to seeing than Jared Goff continuing this level. I think Jared Goff might flame out just a little bit. Not the Lions, but Goff's numbers might come down or efficiency might come down against these divisional opponents. I, think I will be betting. I just I've had a second to think about it. I will be betting on Josh Allen to win MVP now that I think about it. Now that you that think was my preseason it. pick. Now that I think about it, I just I just thought he's kept the turnovers down. Amari Cooper now. No picks. That division yeah. stinks. They stink. They're bad. I, I just wrote it down. Josh Allen MVP. Really small writing right there. You can see it. Josh Allen MVP. Josh Allen MVP. I love it. Uh let's talk about let's talk about a game this week, real quick. We've got 49ers Cowboys. Is this a loser leaves town game? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. You know, I took I the guess, Cowboys. Did you? That's bold. I took the Cowboys. And listen, there's this is without watched, weapons. I don't blame you. And that's that's the thing. You have the Cowboys coming off of a bye. To answer your question, Carter, is it a loser leaves town game? Uh, the four, the 49ers. There's just so many questions. Right? Uh, is like wide receiver two now. He's he's the one that's going to be getting all these targets. And this is is Jawan Jennings going to be healthy? We know Ayuk's out for the season. There's no CMC yet. Is Debo going to play? Debo's got the fluid in his lungs. The guy's drowning. He's drowning right now. And like, what are we supposed to do here? The Ricky Cowboys Pearsall are, back. Yeah, Pearsall's back again. Jawan Jennings. That's are we going to get him back? Ronnie Bell season. Shout out Michigan man. I, I don't know, and this offense is so depleted. I, I, it's just really hard to get a grasp on the 49ers. They, honestly, they might be a suitor for Cup now. Uh, interdivisional, but I don't think it matters. I'm, I mentioned them, but yeah, I don't know how that would, that would work out divisional-wise. People love to do the yeah, interdivisional poo -poo thing. poo-poo on that. I this took Cowboys. I, th yeah. I think ultimately what it comes down to, sorry, Connor, cut you off. No, go ahead. Cowboys coming off a bye. They're well-rested. The 49ers are banged up. I understand the Cowboys' defense is as well, but I took the Cowboys here. 
I think yeah. the problem with this game or this 49er season as a whole right now is we've seen this consistent theme of Super Bowl losers just <laughs> usually never recover. The Chiefs are almost the outlier, and the Tom Brady Patriots six, seven years ago. But you look at teams in the past, like the Bengals in their following year, the Panthers in their following year, the Falcons in their following year, that runner-up hangover is very, very real. And we're seeing it with the 49ers this year. It's just a disaster. Remember like three, four years ago, it was the Niners were starting C.J. Beathard, and you didn't know who was playing on Thursday night football for them oh, every yeah. week. We are two, three weeks away from C.J. Beathard playing for this Niners team, the way this trend has been going, because they just keep getting injured. It doesn't matter at this point. And at what point are we going to say we're nervous about the Niners making the playoffs? Seattle keeps winning. That is not a crazy conversation. Seattle keeps winning. The Cardinals randomly, like I said, <laughs> they just keep trying to bone Vegas and everybody yep. that bets on their games. You it, called it, that one. I did call that one. It was always going to be a weird game for the Cardinals. Every single Cardinals game is weird. But yeah. this might be a loser least town game because the Niners, luckily for them, the division is weaker this year. The Cowboys, they're not in a super weak division. The Giants stink, but the Commanders and the Eagles are solid, and the Eagles have a really good schedule coming yeah. up. They have a really good schedule, though. That's fair. If they want to make the wild card, they're going to need 10 wins. Well, look at Dallas' schedule coming up. Niners, obviously. Falcons, Eagles, Texans, Commanders. That's not an easy stretch by any means. No, not at all. Because Jane Daniels is probably back by Thanksgiving, right? And we need to see major improvement from that Cowboys defense. Yeah, I think this is too many points. I think it opened at like six and a half or six or something like that. It's already down to four and a half. I think the Cowboys cover this, and I think the Cowboys genuinely have a chance to win outright. It's going to be that weird game where CeeDee Lamb has 12 catches for 150 yards, and people are like, wait a second, Dallas might be making some noise. But then deep down, everyone who actually watches the games knows they're not for real. Mm. Confirmed. We watch games. We do watch games. We might even watch NBA games. <laughs> might be watching them right now, watching watch a blowout potentially right now. Who knows? Who knows what's happening right now? Let's uh, Let's go through some games real quick. Thursday night football. Vikings at Rams. I'll actually be at this game for some reason. Vikings minus three. That's a weird spread, Dylan. That's a weird spread. Tells you exactly what you need to know about the Minnesota Vikings. That spread right there tells you exactly what you need to know. And honestly, I it it makes me want to take the Rams. The only reason I'm not is because this Rams offensive line is so bad. I just think Brian Flores calls some things up. Matthew Stafford doesn't have time to throw the ball, and it's just going to be miserable for the Rams. But in terms of, like, uh, I don't want to say a power ranking standard, but you see Rams plus three, and you're like, oh, okay, I actually kind of like that. But I can't because of the matchup on the offensive line for the Rams, uh, so I'm staying away. But that line tells you everything you need to know about what anybody that knows anything about football is thinking about the Vikings. I agree. I agree. I still think the Vikings are a solid team. I think they're going to make the playoffs. I think they sure. could win a playoff game or two. I don't think mm. they're a Super Bowl team with Sam Darnold as their quarterback. But my, Vikings minus three is the rat line of the week, in my opinion. Why is this so, so low? Because this Rams seems depleted. They're looking to trade people. This is the spot that Sean McVay loves to be in, where all of a sudden everyone's like, yeah, 90% of bets and everybody's picking the Vikings this week, and he comes out and for some reason wins 22-21 against the Vikings. I feel like, didn't they play the Lions opening night, the Rams? Wasn't that opening night Sunday football? Or mm -hmm. one, Yeah. He was pretty good. Stafford was pretty good when he got blitzed. He was getting rid of the ball quickly, making some pretty good throws. If the Vikings bring it, well, he's going to be back for this game. Are we, getting a, are we getting a hundred percent cup though? An eighty percent cup is still ten times better than any other receiver on that that's been playing for them lately. But Stafford Very was pretty fair. good under pressure in that game, getting the ball out quick. If Cup does play, I think he might have twelve catches for like fifty yards, just dump offs, three yard <laughs> dump offs, just right in front of him. But if the Vikings do blitz a ton and let Stafford get hot, there there is a path for him to lose this game. If they start bringing the pressure, but Stafford's just getting rid of it and guys are winning one on one outside, there is a path. And I think Carter, you're right, minus three. Makes no sense. You're sitting there like, why isn't this at least four and a half, five points? Yeah. Yeah. Also, I need to get stats department on this, but uh, is every Thursday night game a blowout? So yeah, should let we, me get stats guy on that. Should we just get Rams? Should we just take alt line Rams minus 10, Vikings minus 10? Uh, let's see. Broncos beat the Saints by 23. Niners beat the Seahawks by 12. 
Falcons Bucks went to overtime two weeks ago. That okay. was a good one. That's it. Mm. That's the one. That was a good one. There we go. All right, correction there. That's what we needed. All right, let's steamroll through some games and then let's get out of here. All right, uh, in a division game, Lamar Jackson versus Dorian Thompson Robinson. The Ravens are a nine point favorite at Cleveland. Yuck. It's too many points. Too many points? What? I think it's too many points. Is it DTR or is it Jameis Winston? Is it actually DTR? I would assume it's DTR. I haven't seen anything official yet. I, I'm if assuming it's Jameis, it's that's too many points. Jameis, that's too many Guys, points? I, I don't know if Deshaun was the problem here. <laughs> I think the problems are so <laughs> much bigger. The problems are so much bigger. than, And I understand we want to Maybe crap right. on Deshaun Watson for whatever reason. But, I mean, I don't uh, care. For whatever reason. Put, yeah. Well, you know there are reasons, reasons. But yeah there are reasons there are plenty of reasons but there i don't think it was him that was the problem and, and no matter who you put in there i think it's just going to be really bad for the rest of the year as mm. long as i've known you i don't think i've ever seen you take like a 10 point favorite uh yeah i usually don't especially within divisional and i'm not going to take the ravens mm, but okay. i can't take the browns i just okay. can't do it all right colt texans games in houston texans minus six Give me the Texans. If Anthony Richardson's playing, I'm fading him every week. I do not care. No. It's, you know, it's an anti Richardson pick. Okay. It's just an anti Richardson pick. That's a spite pick. Get Flacco back in there. My issue is the Colts' defense is terrible. That, too. If there was ever a get right game for Stroud off a, uh, off a sub 100 yard passing week, this would be the week. Because my thing is, if the Texans are going to have success on the ground in this game, then they're going to win because Stroud's going to have all day to throw. And this Colts', well, Colts defense sucks. So Mixon's going to have a field day. Yeah. Y- yeah, Mixon alt yards for me this week. Already placed. It, once it comes out, if when you're listening to this, it'll already be placed. But anyhow, uh, anything else on that game, Dylan? Ah, uh, I don't have much. I uh, the Texans are just the luckiest team in football, according to the luck rankings, and it's hard for me to to bet on the luckiest team. You know how I feel about the luck rankings. So I've been down on the Texans all year, so I'm not excited about it, but I think this is a get-right game. So BYU is one of the luckiest teams in college football, so you're anti-Mormon? Is that what you're saying? Uh, who do they play this week? UCF. Two-point no, favorite against a backup quarterback. So Okay, I, I didn't bet that game. But <laughs> I remember looking, I looked at their, uh, their defensive position chart on PFF. It was just a bunch of orange, which is never good. Mm. Yeah. Packers, Jaguars. Sneaky fun game, Connor. <laughs> this, for whatever reason, I have no stats to back it up. I kind of like the Jags here. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing it. No, I was high on them preseason. It's in no, this is your West Virginia. This is your West Virginia. This is just I can't stop. <laughs> in my head, I'm like, oh, Trevor Lawrence, a couple of pretty good receivers. Like the, the D line should be better than what it actually is. Tank Bigsby's running the ball well. I can't quit him. I think four and mm, sneaky good spot for the Jags. And the Packers coming off a close win against the Texans. Yep. Who knows if they should have actually won that game. And yep, the games in high. Jacksonville going to be a little humid down there. I don't know if things could get weird. Packers playing the Lions next week. Look ahead spot. Mm. Dylan, Dylan. I like that angle. I like that angle. I'm not going to take anything this game. But the, the, what you're talking about with the Packers going to Jacksonville, whatnot, close game. And Jacksonville's coming from London. And so I don't care how many times they played in London. That's That's a disadvantage right there. A lot of travel. You know, another disadvantage that we haven't touched on, Doug Peterson's still the coach of this football team. So mm. they might not get my money now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> no, that's fair. Does he get tired if they lose? <sighs> we just keep doing it every week. Every week. Maybe they're just waiting question. on one loss. They lose by like 20 points, if, it's over. Yeah, I was about to say, if this is like a 20-point blowout, yeah, if it's a close loss, I think he, uh, I think his car key still works. Or his, uh, yeah, his key card still works <laughs> okay. come Monday. Okay. All right. Um, Titans-Lions. Lions minus 11 in this game. Um PU stinky. Is this a game the Lions just, you know, they get that big win over the Vikings. They just look down on this Titans team a little bit. Sleepwalk. Look ahead spot. You just talked about it, Connor. It's the reason why I bet the Titans. Hey, look ahead spot to a game uh, against Green Bay next week for the Lions. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer starting again? Uh, we don't know. We Depends on Levis' shoulder. I don't think the quarterback shoulder? matters. Depends on his shoulder? I don't know if that's what it depends on. Was AC joint? That's your shoulder, right? Well, I don't know if we ever see Levis oh, start calling, a game again. You're calling people a liar now, huh? Nope. Nope. Okay. Nope. All right. nope. Think we're think saying the game, real the game doesn't depend on Levis at all, is what we're saying. Yes. I would agree with that. It doesn't. It doesn't. Rudolph or Levis, it doesn't change my opinion on this game. Jets, Patriots, we're not going to spend much time on this game. Uh, yuck. I want to take the Pats, guys. Talk me out of it. I want to take them. Do it. 
I'm not going to talk <laughs> you out. Okay, fine. I'll yeah, take him. I'm, I'm, I'm not, not going to talk you out of it. Let's do – should we just do a dog money line parlay this week? We do Patriots money line. We do Jags Titans money line. Titans money line and then Jags money line. Just that gross three legger that ruins everybody's money line parlays. Whew. F- Saints Feed families. Saints don't hate the Saints. I love the Saints. I the love the Saints. That's a lot of points. That's a lot of points. That's a lot <laughs> All right, of let's, points. Uh, let's quickly roll through this right now. Falcons Bucks. Uh, Falcons <laughs> minus two and a half. Love the Falcons. Don't overthink this one. Love the Falcons. Uh, this is my plug. Watch kickoff show because we got minus one and a half this morning. Um, just an awful spot for the Bucks. Monday coming off Monday Night Football against the Ravens. You have this game, and then you're looking ahead to Monday Night Football against the Chiefs. I already talked about it. Love the Falcons here. Baker without his two crutches, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, propping him up. Baker's a different quarterback, so I love the Falcons here too. And this is going to be a game where the Atlanta Falcons secondary gets their stats boosted a little bit for getting some interceptions. So <laughs> mm. uh, without without Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, Baker's just going to close his eyes and say, F it. Uh, McMillan. Uh, Atlanta I don't even D. Know. Who else? Scotty Miller's still on that Bucks team? I don't even know. K. Dot. K. Dot. There we go. <laughs> Cardinals, Dolphins. Uh, I don't know if Tua is starting or not. It seems like he is. Sneaky, fun game. Sneaky like the Cardinals here. Same. Love the Cardinals here. Even if Tua does play, you cannot trust yep. that he's 100%. And if that, you're getting yep. Snoop or you're getting Tim Boyle, like 100%, I agree with that. I, I would have liked it more if the Cardinals lost to the Chargers last night on Monday Night Football, but I still like it. I got it at three and a half. Dolphins are winning this game by like two. Yeah, Cardinals will cover. <laughs> there you go. We have, the, we have the script. Give me the Cardinals. Yeah, all right. Eagles Bengals. This is a great game, actually. I uh, this is a game for me that I'm not touching in Neither any am I. way, shape, or form. I'm just not even going to do it. I've banned myself from Eagles games. I just I get <laughs> too, I get too my, emotional. I'm too emotionally invested. I bet on the Eagles and I lose. And I'm like, why the heck did I bet on the Eagles? And I bet on the other team and I lose. And I'm like, wow, maybe I was wrong about the Eagles, so I just stay away. <laughs> Bears Commanders, rookie matchup. Jaden Daniels looked like he's not going to start. That's why I put an ask. I didn't do anything for this game because I didn't know if we were getting Daniels or, or Mariota. So I put like a little asterisk said, do not bet. Yeah, I think that's fair. I don't. I wouldn't want to touch this game. Uh, Caleb Williams might put up some numbers on this. Well, Washington's defense hasn't been horrible, but I still think Caleb Williams might put up some numbers. Yeah, but who have they played? Also true. That's great question. Off. Big, big game against the Panthers. Still gave, up 30, there. gave up a bunch of point a bunch of points to teams with above average offenses. So I still yep. have questions about the commanders defense. Your defense is ever the other thing about the commanders, everyone's sitting there like, no, Marcus Mariota, he's not bad. He looks pretty solid. Who did he look solid against? The worst team in the NFL right now. Yeah. Um, next game we'll go through it. I'll unfortunately be at this game. Panthers, Broncos, Broncos minus nine. Yuck. Yuck. We're Bo getting Bryce Young. Not, bro, we might get Bryce Young after Andy Dalton got in a car wreck. I don't know. It seems like Dave Canales can't stand Bryce Young. We might be getting Jake Luton in this game, or Johnny Hecker, the punter, might play quarterback. Mm. Who knows? At Jake this Plummer? Point. Jake Plummer, Jake Luton, Jake Locker, Jake Hayner. Jake from, uh, State, Jake Farm. from State Farm. Yeah, it yep. doesn't matter. It, it, I love who it. cares who's playing quarterback for the Panthers? They're losing this game. They stink. Dylan. Nine's a lot of points, though. Bo Nix is a favorite with nine points. That defense is good, though. <laughs> Denver defense is amazing. I think the bigger story we need to focus on here is I'm already I'm already inking the Broncos down for a win, and they're going to find themselves at five and three through eight games. What's the narrative going to be, boys? <laughs> Sean Payton is five Sean Payton's the quarterback whisperer. Yeah, Sean Payton doing bounties again. <laughs> Did Sean Payton run over Andy Dalton today? Is the question we need to ask. Oh, TMZ. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. Did he have yeah, Brian, did he Kelly, Brian Kelly killed a kid. Then you have Sean Payton got Andy Dalton, Ginger, in a car wreck. And Jim Beheim killed someone as well. Yep. And Dang. then trash Greensboro. Yep, yep. Dang. Uh, Saints Chargers, another yuck game. Dylan likes this one. Kickoff show. I'm going to shout it out again. It's much more gambling-centric. Uh we hit two five stars in a row. I think it was Bucks two weeks ago against whoever they were playing. I can't remember. Last Saints, week, right? It might have been the Saints. Yes, and rest advantage. The Rattler started, yeah. Yep, and then we have last week, Lions plus two and a half. Never a question. 
This week, we're going Saints plus seven and a half. And you might all, Dylan, why are you betting on a Saints team with Spencer Rattler? Oh, they're so bad. They won their first two games, lost five in a row. You have the Saints coming off of Thursday night football. You have the Chargers coming off of Monday night football. This has been a profitable spot for us this year. It has. That, and that's that's all it is. I don't care who's the quarterback. I don't, I don't care about any of that. This is a great the, spot for the Saints. The bigger question is, you're betting against Jim Harbaugh? Well... Um, you don't think you'll have the boys ready on a short week? I'm not saying that. Uh, college is different than the NFL. I think yep. we all know that. Yep. Urban Meyer, a decent coach at Ohio State, and just absolutely flails at Jacksonville. So He did some um, flailing, all right. He did some flailing. It's a little groping, flailing, all that jazz. <laughs> Grabbing booty at the local roosters. Mm, it's tough. <laughs> yeah. Chiefs Raiders, 10 points oh, spread. Man. A lot of well, points. Number one rule of the show? Betting against Desmond Ritter? Oh. <laughs> no, no, that's not uh, the number. That's like, I think that's three. I think that's number It's a top three. five. That is yeah, one top... of the ten commandments of this show. I think it has to be. Or we're getting a little sacrilegious now. Maybe we pause with that. But okay. I, I mean, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. The Carter Cast commandments. The... Well, <laughs> mm, yeah, be careful, commandments be with a C. Yeah, yeah with a C. Was, with a C. That. Yeah, with a C. I, speaking of, I, I think my mom's printing us shirts. And <laughs> I've, I've thought about. Like, what if we sold merch? But I don't know if we can walk around nope. with KK exclamation point on it. I don't think chat. so nope. either. I don't nope. think we, we might have to do a logo redesign. Anyway, that's not that's besides the point. That's that's I, merch days. That'll that'll be mer- merch will be different. Yeah, merch <laughs> merch will be different. I, <laughs> the Raiders were good to me last year on Christmas. I remember they won as like a four uh, plus four hundred on the money line. They beat the Chiefs. I'm taking the Raiders here as a loyalty pick. I understand we might be getting Desmond Ritter, but the number one rule of this show, fade the Chiefs is more than a field goal favorite. I have to do it. Divisional home dog. You know what you can do? Not bet it? You can not bet this game. If Minshew starts, I'll bet the Raiders. I will not bet Desmond Ritter. That is a big rule for me. Not going to do it. Well, here's the problem. Minshew starts, you're not getting 10. Maybe I just don't bet it. (laughs) Welcome to the party. There we go. Maybe I look myself in the mirror and say, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right, last game we'll talk about, and then we'll do parlay and get out of here. Bear, uh, no, not sorry. Not Bears Commanders. Bills Seahawks. A Sneaky very, good game. Yeah, a very. it's going to be a very telling game. No, Dylan? Uh, I can't be honest. Yep. Can't be honest with you guys. Yep. I took the Seahawks plus three. Wrong. I, I can't remember my reasoning. <laughs> Kickoff really, show. Uh, kickoff kick show. Off show. Watch a kickoff yep. show. Yep. Kickoff Watch show. Kickoff show. Go. You'll find out the reasoning there, apparently. We can't do that on here. <laughs> yeah. I really don't remember. As the, the Bills have the Dolphins next week, so maybe maybe I thought look, look ahead. ahead spot for a divisional no. game, but that's look it. Look ahead to that's... what? Snoop Huntley? We're looking ahead to Tim Boyle? <laughs> well, no. Two of, I, a divisional game, boys. Look ahead to some big booty Latinas down in Miami. What are we doing here, Dylan? Oh, my gosh. This is hey, insane. I'm going to keep my statement. If two comes back this week, Bills are looking ahead to Tim Boyle and Snoop Huntley still. Wow. No Guardian wow. cap to it? I mean, did he do Kung Fu or something to prevent this whole situation from happening Chi, one offseason? Taekwondo. I yeah. I don't know, but Jiu Jitsu, I think, is what it was, actually. Cobra Kai. Give me the Bills. I don't think the Seahawks defense is legit. I'm with you. Give me the Bills. I'm all over them. Josh right. Allen. Field Jury's day. out. Jury's out. If the, Jury's Seahawks out. Can't tack- if the Seahawks can't tackle some of these other teams, you think they're going to bring down Josh Allen on the goal line? Uh, in the open field? Mm. Uh, Eh, I don't know. I'm not sure if, if Josh Allen's the guy that I would use as the example here. I would. But I don't know. Yeah. Anyhow. All right. Should we do a parlay and get out of here? I guess. Whoa. What did I Hold miss? Hold on. Do we miss? Are we, are we waiting for Monday Night Football? We're waiting for Monday Night Football. Okay. Yeah. All right. I cannot believe Russell Wilson's a touchdown favorite. And I'll just go ahead and say that. I can I can't. He looked great. Stinks. He looked great. Pickens, Pickens is going to want a 10-year extension now. He wanted out two weeks ago. He's going to want a 10-year extension now. As long as Rusty's here, I want to be here. I'm slamming mm. the under. Slamming the under. All right, there we go. Uh, let's do a parlay pick. Let's get out of here. I don't want to be sussy for Rusty much longer. I, I think I actually wore this last week, too. <laughs> mom, I think I, mom did the laundry this week for you? Mom, yeah. <laughs> she did that. I'm, I haven't been back to uh, back mm. to where they live yet. Oh, what, what do you mean? No. But yeah, it's just upstairs. What do you mean? What do you want me to I'll say? I'll never let this die. I'll never what let this die. What do you want me to die. say to those comments? I can't even think of anything witty to come back with. What'd she cook tonight? 
<laughs> frozen meal. Frozen, a frozen meal. A frozen <laughs> buffalo mac and cheese. Oh, so yeah, she. Oh, Parla, so she, she you got something funny to say? No, 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 no. You know, mom's basement. You know, um, as I'm recording this from a basement, ironically. Uh, all right, let's do it. Parlay, Dylan, what's your pick? Saints plus seven. Okay, give me Falcons minus two and a half. Oh my gosh, I love it. I'm going to go with the Arizona Cardinals plus three and a half. If you can find a three and a half out there against the Dolphins, uh, even if two is back, I don't mind it. Okay, so we don't have one from Ben right now. Do we three? want to? Do we want to keep it three, or do we want to do Rams money line? No, no I don't Thursdays. want Rams money line. Yeah, I don't no, want, okay. I don't. Wait, it. is that Ben's original pick? His original pick was Rams then, money line. Then I, I want s- Rams money line. Mm. I thought we were just throwing it in there to throw it in there. No, 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 no. It was his original pick, but I voted no Thursday night football. I think I'm going to accidentally forget to bet it and then rebet the three legger Sunday morning. Whoops. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never mind. All right, that's it. that's the parlay then. That's it. All right, let's do it. Uh, Rams money line, Falcons minus two and a half, Cards plus three and a half, and then Dylan, what was your pick against Saints plus Saints. seven? Yep. All I right. see seven and a half, Dylan, if you want it. Give, Give it to we're me. Taking, yeah, we're getting the best number possible out here. Okay. All right, that does it from us. Make sure to follow at CarterCast. Follow our socials on everything. Download SeatGeek. Use code CarterCast. $20 off your first purchase. We'll be back. Make sure to tune into the NBA shows Connor and I did. NBA Western and Eastern Conference out now as you're listening to this. Even though the season started, it all still applies. You can still bet almost all of these things, even though the season started. So go mm-hmm. check it out. Great episodes over there. And we'll be back. NFL recap. We'll see y'all next time. Bye.